Greetings and salutations to all you folks out there. I've got something for you today that we have not done in a while. This is going to be an epic sentence cast. So buckle up, get something to drink, chillax, get ready, because we're going to spend a long time watching some fantastic players demolish the map of Settens. This is pretty much the who's who in the Settens game set. On the northern side, we've got Blackheart taking Aeon. We've got VMC Snack. He's taking Seraphim in the air slot. This was probably all randoms launch, which is what it typically is nowadays for Settens players. Pascal, he is going Aeon on the rock slot. And then Dogler taking Seraphim on the front. So double Aeon Navy, Seraphim front, and Seraphim back. On the south side, we have Foley taking Aeon, so that's going to be an Aeon Symmetrical Navy. Seraphim for Strogo, that is going to be an interesting matchup, both of the long-range navies. And Lanalus as Aeon on the front, first bomber out for Dogler. That would be SC account slash Tanuo Cox, whatever you want to call him. He is going to go for an incredibly aggressive early build, and Steermorn taking UEF in the air slot on the south side. That's going to be a little bit of a disadvantage in the early game because you don't have the double resource allocation. you got to depend on your teammates getting ridiculously early RAS in order to get anything done. And there goes the bomber directly over the head of the ACU. He's going to know that's incoming. Spread out your engineers, my friend. And perfect dodge. That's going to be a wide miss for Dogler, that's the disadvantage of the bomber in the early slot right there because you have to micromanage it. At the same time, you're going to try to be getting your own build online. Although it looks like he has the mother of all reclaim queues set up. Should not be a problem to get all of that mass in his own bag. Let's see, was that an engineer kill? I think that was a single solitary engineer kill. He has caused a well, probably caused a pretty good panic attack. I know that's my reaction when I get a bomber sent at me right at the beginning of a sentence game. It's just really frustrating when you see that coming and you know that you're going to have to abandon your early build. You're not going to get anything done. It's just a huge pain in the left buttock. But Lanalus did handle it pretty decently, and he is going to keep on a trucking towards the north, still substantially ahead of, of uh, Dogler in score at least. Looks like we've got engineers spreading out far and wide. First Hydro for Dogler. Commander he was able attack. to recover somewhat on his power situation due to his ACU walking and really not building anything but engineers. So I don't think he's going to stall too badly at any point, but he's not going to be able to pull the massive early mechs upgrades that the uh, front player typically does. Yes, you overflow a ton of mass to your team, but you do want to grab those early mechs upgrades for yourself as well so that you can compete against your opponent well as you're pouring out your first T1 units. I believe that Lanalus is going to have much more substantial T1 spam than Dogler will, and that is probably going to cause some issues as we move on here. Three minutes and 30 seconds. Should be seeing transports in just a minute here. It looks like we're seeing interceptors from Pascal, who has established a very aggressive air presence on the south side. He's got three, four interceptors in the air and two scouts. And he is heading directly for that T1 transport over there. On the left side, Blackheart has been able to lock down Foley's air factory. There is going to be no air for you, good sir. And he's already popped out his own transport. Going to grab those engineers and head all the way across. That poor transport is going to get shot down. He just about touched down on the water. Almost saved himself. But alas, it was not meant to be. That is exactly what you're supposed to do right there. If you can lock down that air factory, even temporarily at the very beginning of the game, you can pretty much get out your own transport completely and totally risk-free. Don't even have to worry about it. No extra micro needed. Just plant those interceptors on a patrol order right over the top of the air factory and leave them parked. On the north side, looks like VMC Sec is ahead on his air build. He's pulling in 64 mass per tick. Well, some of that, though, is reclaim income. It looks like 45 plus a whole bunch of trees. He's got several T2 mass extractor upgrades under his belt. It looks like he's already going for a T2P gen at 4 minutes and 50 seconds. So very, very nice build up there. Steerborn not doing quite as well. He is a fair bit behind on mass income. Just completed 
his third T2 Mass Extractor upgrade and does not have a T2 factory up yet. So that is going to give a pretty good advantage to VMC Snake. Maybe we'll see a Strap Bomber Rush, maybe we won't, I do not know. Doggler just kind of chillaxing out there in the middle, not sure, there he goes. He's going to grab that mass. Laneless and Doggler, let's take a look at you guys' reclaim. 7,000 and 6,000, Doggler is going to zap up these T2 Rex here, and that should even up the odds quite a bit. So pretty much an even 50-50 split on the early mass grab. Laneless though is, well, they're both pulling 20s mass per tick-ish. Looks like 28 for Laneless and 26 for Doggler if the numbers are to be de believed and the reclaim numbers are not lying to us. Already got, let's see, one T2 mass extractor there and two T2 mass extractors down here with three factories feeding units. So not as much of a unit advantage as I would have thought. Doggler was able to just throw down all of those mass extractors with individual engineers in a lot of places um, as he was sucking up the mass in the middle, pretty much completely surviving off of reclaim without any mass income for the better portion of that starting build. On the left side, Blackheart has captured the island very easily, if I do say so myself, and he is trying to get a transport with a couple of auroras across the water. That is going to get stopped by an interceptor, though. Looks like he is not going to be able to land. Just drop those things off. They're hover tanks. You don't have to lose them. Nope. Apparently, he wants to uh, wants to let them die. Aurora is moving up just a little bit, putting the creep in on SC account. That is the dangerous thing about Aurora is if you're not proactive with your micro, those guys are going to kite you to death. T1 radar system going down, that is going to provide some much needed intel for this side so we can see where those tanks are headed to and how best to head them off. There's a superior number of THAMs, but if those Auroras can get a head start moving back, yeah, not quite what was needed. There's the ACU, that's going to be a save and a bit of a win, and honestly, for Dogler. Now he has got three land factories down. He is still pushing units towards the front, but no new factories planned. He is going hardcore T2 mass extractor upgrades. That is four land factories down and energy storage building for Lanalus, who is going to be getting a little bit more aggressive with his um, ACU. Dogler may have to dip into the water here. He's at about half health. And he's got all of these auroras moving up in the back. He's gonna have to duck that head underneath the water in order to evade that fire. Many, many T1 bombers are to be found in Blackheart's build. Talk about an aggressive air game. He has got double the amount of interceptors of Foley. Well, Foley has lost quite a few as well, so that's not entirely a true comparison. But he is going to ram two bombers all the way up the back side of the map. Looks like he's planning on bombing out Steerborn, trying to kill off some of that early build power because that is the most crippling thing that you can do to the early air is kill off all of these engineers. And that was a leaning on the wrong button there. Sorry, guys. If he can kill off those engies, which it looks like he is setting up pretty nicely to do. There's a bomb and not quite. If he would have planted both of those in, uh, bombers on here, he could have taken out every single T2 engineer. Well, nope, there's a couple right there. So I suppose that was not going to pan out in the end, no matter which one he went for. He couldn't have killed all of them. But still, T2 engineers are fairly expensive, and it is a lot of build power to lose when you're on that oh-so-critical early portion of the build. Aurora's moving up. Lanalus has gotten both gun upgrades. He's going to be able to tear a new one in this group of T1. Kiting bastard Aeon players. Overcharge there, pulling three kills. And he is going to be able to pursue that directly up into the base pretty much as far as he wants to go. Yep, double gun. That is the longest range you'll find on any ACU. He's going to be able to take anything that Doggler can throw at him. We got a T2 Engineer coming out that is probably going to try to get down some point defense. But as close as that ACU is and as fast as he's pushing, I really don't think there's anything that Doggler can do to stop that commander. He's got an overcharge in his back pocket should he run into anything nasty. And there's not too much build power up there. So 
yeah, if I'm not totally mistaken, the Aeon ACU with the double gun upgrade actually completely outclasses the T1 point defense, can kill it from far out of range. Dogler throwing down a T1 point defense there with a few wall sections. He has got some frigates to cover his comm. And uh, let's see, that is a T2 upgrade. So kudos to him. He may actually be able to get something done. Lanel is planning an overcharge right in the middle of the build power, taking four engineers out and laying down fire on the T2 point defense. That is going to be game over for the attempted resistance of Dogler. And he is going to try to push that ACU back in a last ditch attempt. This is to force a back step so that you can hopefully get some point defense back online in order to defuse this situation but he just does not have enough tanks. There is not enough there to stop the flow of units. Dogler throwing down T2 point defense in the back as well. He's gonna try to hold the neck with his commander so that he can cut off the flow of units. If he can limit the number of tanks that are in this area, his team has a chance of catching it back up. He has got a lot to do here. Um, yeah. The artillery is not gonna be fun is that T2 point defense is going to come online and then pretty much immediately die unless I am totally mistaken. Here comes the fire and yeah, there's enough shots in the air to kill that thing now. Sad, sad day. Looks like Blackheart got harassed a little bit. He lost a mass extractor and some of the health on his land factory due to that Aeon frigate. He's gonna throw down some wall sections. Who would have thunk it? A wall versus Navy. And that was just about a tongue tie, but I managed to evade it oh so smoothly. And now that I've opened my big fat mouth, I am going to be cursed to terrible pronunciations for the rest of this game. T2NGs being handed off to Foley. That is exactly what I was talking about. Uh, he is going to get that resource allocation assistance from his teammates. That's going to boost up his power income because UEF has, I think, the worst power income of any of the ACUs um, off of resource allocation. I may be mistaken on that. I think the Cybern one has higher mass or higher power, lower mass than UEF. But I am sure if I'm mistaken in saying that, someone will correct me in the comments because they always do. If there's one thing the internet is fantastic at, it is correcting anyone who is wrong. T1 bombers coming in, Blackheart still pushing out enormous quantities of air. He is being assisted by some beautiful ASF from VMC. That is exactly what you want to see at 12 minutes. A nice tight little clump of ASF swarming about your head, protecting the place, keeping you from dying. Laneless is up to three vet on his gun comp, but uh, veterancy and gun upgrades don't do you any good versus incoming gunships and bombers. Dogler still hovering around half health and trying to get that T2 point defense online. I honestly don't know what he is doing with that. Um, yeah, there's enough artillery streaming in that I don't think he'll ever be able to catch up on that. T1 bombers coming in, an awful lot of them, 5k health, and it looks like we're going to have an air win for Steerborn. Very close engagement, but it is going to be a win, but he's not going to be able to save the commander. 900 health, ASF, get, nope, nope, never mind. Too late. That is going to be the end of Lanalus's commander. So that means that Dogler is going to gain a little bit of room. He finally built a freaking T1 point defense. Why did it take you so long to figure that one out? That's going to leave his base in shambles, but he will be able to reestablish his hold on the neck of the map, and that's going to give him an absolute metric crap ton of reclaim. We've got all the factories and mechs right here, which granted did belong to him in the first place, but then we've got all of the wrecks strewn about, and he's going to be able to push through the neck here and grab all of this reclaim as well. So he's going to get a nice, tidy little mass boost to get him over the edge as he pushes on in this game. Right now he is lowest on the totem pole for income, which is pretty much to be expected of the front player. Commander, um, 27 per tick, actually which is frighteningly low. Let's take a look at the reclaim numbers. We got a destroyer here in the middle, but other than that, not too terribly much is happening. So this is a good opportunity to flip through these. Looks like Dogler is on 9K income and ticking up rather rapidly. Strogo at 36 and the same. 
Let's see, he is on 112 sustained. ASF moving up. Those T1 bombers I don't think are going to go much of anywhere. Blackheart on 6,800 reclaim and 151 mass per tick, which is a very high number for a beach player at 14 minutes. Foley at 228, but only due to the fact that he has the front eco. He is actually about the same or lower than Blackheart is on a Navy to Navy comparison. Pascal, he is sitting on 164, which is probably about what uh, Foley is at on only his Naval Nexus. Well, no, lower than that because he didn't have those T2s. VMC, sitting on 153 per tick and 6K power. Fairly good place to be at when you're building air and then Steerborn, last but certainly not least, is sitting on 156 income and barely maintaining his power grid thanks to some friendly help. Dogler is in reach of a point stats, but I am confident that he will be able to overcharge it without too much of a problem. And there we go. The middle is owned by, I was about to call out the color, I suppose that's red. Kind of a maroonish color. This is red. Or at least what I think of as red. Oh, this is going to hurt. And it's going to hurt badly. T1 bombers on spread attack orders. Good lord, that is bad. All the build power goes poof. That means that Strogo is not going to be making much navy for the next few minutes. He has a lot of navy out already, but uh, he's not going to be able to do anything offensive-wise while his opponent has far more build power than he does. He's just going to be able to churn out way more units. Now is a good time to upgrade your mechs because you don't have enough um, build power to actually push your navy out. Little bit of an air spat there. The T1 bombers were disposed of, and I think that VMC actually has about the same... Um, well, no, those are swift wins. Never mind. He has far fewer than Steerborn does. 25 ASF. Well, all right, guys, there's going to be an awesome jump cut there because I had unhandled exception crash. It's been a while since that happened, and ever since I downloaded Windows 10, uh, this has really given me nothing but problems. I still haven't solved the dual screen issue, which is why I am uh, not including the minimap down here in the corner like I usually do. Still haven't figured out a solution to that, and I am... The, the downgrade to Windows 8 is sounding more and more like a plan as this goes on. I think Windows 10 is just not there yet as far as driver support and compatibility goes. Even on Windows 7 compatibility mode, it just does not work. Dogler having to get out of the water in the mid because there's a couple of destroyers headed his way. He's going to be able to overcharge one and two frigates. So a good bit of damage to that navy on that side. And then Blackheart is going to move down for a little bit of protection. Always good to have a buddy as a bodyguard when you're stuck on the narrow neck in Sentence. And there's going to be a bit of a standoff here in this Navy. I don't think either person is really going to want to be the aggressor here. Well, the destroyers are going to get in range of each other. But you've got an inferior naval force versus a, well... The numbers are close. The numbers are very, very close, but it looks like red does have more build power. So it's going to be an interesting little dynamic here as we move forward. Looks like two more bombers are coming in. Good lord, the massacre is going to happen all over again. Why would you let him do this to you? No! Oh, good. One bomber got stopped. Still going to lose a handful of engineers, though. The AA was a good idea, but you got to build it out here if you're going to stop those bombers coming in. Because uh, if they're already point blank, they've already dropped their bombs. Game over, job done. Destroyers are going to win out for blue, I think. Just barely, but the naval situation is favoring the north side. Air is also turning that direction. That did not go well for Steerborn at all. There is a Galactic Colossus in the middle, but Foley is saying, crap, now the Galactic Colossus is going to fail because air was just lost. Steerborn handed air control to VMC due to a little bit 
of a fail in micro. It wasn't anything too terrible, but it only takes a little bit, a teeny tiny misclick to lose the entirety of your air, which in my honest opinion is a little bit broken, but hey, everybody loves a little bit of air micro. That Galactic Colossus is going to do its best to tear a new one in the middle of the map, though. It does have naval support at least halfway up the neck. It'll be able to take out all the build power right there. And uh, should be able to make a good bit of progress before the Strat Bombers come and carry it away to its eternal rest in Valhalla. There is... Let's see. There are about 10 ASF on this side, I suppose. So maybe a Kamikaze run could drop a couple of Strat Bombers, but I don't think there's going to be much to stop them. Galactic Colossus tearing through the middle of the map. Please control K your crap so that that thing does not vet up. It's already up to 25 out of 90 kills required to get that veterancy point. It looks like Doggler was intending to go for a naval factory, but that is not going to turn out very well for him. The artillery is fleeing to the water, and I think that Pascal will be able to maintain his hold on the water while we are up there in that corner. Uh, Red pulled out a little bit of a win due to this incredibly huge amount of build power on that T2 factory. He was able to get a couple of extra destroyers in the vicinity there and push blue back just a teeny tiny little bit. Strat Bombers coming in and a lot of them actually missing on that Galactic Colossus. A good bit of micro from Foley preventing those bombs from connecting. That is one bad thing about the wide pass angles of the Strat Bombers. As long as you know which direction they're coming from, you should be able to dodge most things, even though it seems like it is a slow and clumsy unit. We do have some mercies moving in from the right. Pascal is going to do his best to assist in the death of that GC. Mercy's doing, what, 2400 damage per hit? I think, if I'm not totally mistaken, maybe it's 2600. I think it's 2400. One way or the other, they're doing a substantial hit with each connection on that Galactic Colossus. Um, that is not looking good for Blackheart, actually, because he has gotten edged backwards quite a bit. I think he actually has the Navy to deal with this, but he doesn't want to commit the units because if this Galactic Colossus gets close to his base, he wants to be able to zap it as quickly as he possibly can. And it looks like he is going to start focus firing a little bit on that GC. Moving the units back, but he is keeping them in range. A little bit of extra micro from Foley prevented a couple of hits from the destroyer there. There we go. A little bit of zigzag goes a long ways when it comes to evading the shots of an Aeon destroyer. That's the one thing that sucks about that destroyer is its wide, wide misses with the slow projectile speed. Cataclysmic connection of navies there in the center. And there is something <clears throat> stuck in my throat. There we go. And that is going to be the end of the Galactic Colossus, I think. Is it going to vet? Is it going to vet? I think not. There is the final shot aimed at the face. Nope. One more. Come on. Get in there. And there it is. Death of the GC right on uh, Blackheart's doorstep. That's going to be a tasty little piece of mass there. Hopefully, um, well, theoretically, Doggler should be the one to take that because then he can get things back online in the front that much quicker, but Blackheart has the build power. That's the problem here. So he has actually got his own Galactic Colossus, which he has given to Doggler to micro. I'm assuming to send down towards the middle to get a better hold on the map. And uh, he is going to immediately start a Tempest, so he's going to go ahead and take that wreck, I think. Doggler, nope, Doggler going to suck it up with his T3 ACU a little bit at a time, probably overflowing mass to his teammates in a very big way. On the south side, I love the grouping here. There is a ton of Cybern frigates and destroyers in the water, and almost exclusively destroyers for Pascal, obviously... Cybern Frigate's the star of the show in most early game naval battles, and they remain essential all the way through because they are a meat shield, just like the UEF Frigates. Um, they have high HP, and they basically exist for the sole purpose of blocking battleship shots. It's all they're good for. I know there is a bit of damage in there to be had as well, but that is the main usefulness of the unit. 
It's always annoying when you think you're doing really, really well with your battleships. You're like, oh man, I got five battleships and he only has three. And then here comes the 97 frigates from the left flank, just tearing a new one in your battleship grouping. There's a couple of strats on the south side. Look like they were trying to get in to do a little bit of damage. But Steerborn there with his ASF, and it is going to be a narrow, narrow victory. But he is actually going to win that. That is air advantage to the south side. Hopefully that will do a little bit for them. They keep advancing. It keeps looking like it's so good for the south side. And then things just end up not turning out as planned. Dogler jumping into transport there. Where are you headed, buddy? A little short jump. I guess it's faster than walking anyway. Dogler is going to be able to get everything back online in the middle. He's already pulling up on 161 income, of which I'm sure some is reclaim, but whatever. And uh, he is ramming his artillery into the South Navy in a suicide attempt that is actually going to take out some frigates. Maybe a destroyer. You don't want to let that artillery get within range of your units because it does a huge amount of damage compared to the mass cost of pretty much anything else. Looks like we've got a pretty good swarm of torpedo bombers working up over here for Pascal as well. So maybe not quite as many naval units in the water, but he does have more destroyers and he does have the torpedo bombers. So all in all, I think he's got things going for him. That looks like 23 destroyers and Strogo is sitting on 15 plus some frigates. So as long as he's able to micro those and stay out of the reach of the frigates, then he should be fine. If everybody can see that, that massive hitch whenever I change players, that is very, very strange. That's actually where my game crashed just a few minutes ago. I swapped players twice back to back and the game just quit. I don't know what the deal was. Anywho. It's a seven-year-old game trying to run on the most modern operating system Microsoft has to offer. What else would you expect? Total compatibility? Ha! Ha! After all, this is a uh, software company we're talking about. Looks like uh, that Galactic Colossus is just going to soak some fire in the middle. There are destroyers moving in any time that you can do that extra damage to the T4 before it actually hits your flanks. That is a good day to be alive. Is that actually... What? That is incredible overkill, but nice shot. Buddy, you just aimed one of the biggest cannons in the game for a pinpoint precise kill on an engineer. Well done, good sir. And then a total and complete miss on a destroyer that is roughly four times the size of that engineer in length. Well, you win some and you lose some. Looks like we're forming up for a bit of an epic navy battle here. We've got two Tempests on this side. Versus one, two, and a battleship. And a third Tempest moving in. So this is going to get a little bit hairy. We're going to be watching this naval battle unfold as this goes on. And then on the south side, we have battleships out for both players as well. The superior destroyer numbers are going to be the real clincher over here, though. The number of boats looks about the same, but do not be deceived because the amount of firepower coming out of this blue swarm is going to be absolutely horrifying. Need to get some engineers in the water, though. There is a ton of wrecks down there. Many, many masts were had that day. Let me uh, get into one of these guys' viewpoints here. Why are we not? There we go. Look at the mass on this map. You can tell where the hot zones are, where there has been fighting, and where there is fighting. Looks like 117, 111. Eh, it's still a pretty decent chunk of mass. That, uh, that lowered mass cost is because, if I'm not totally mistaken, Naval Reclaim is halved because it's in the water, which helps gameplay somewhat, but doesn't make a lot of logical sense. I, I guess it does, because you're recovering things off of the seafloor, so maybe it is a little bit more difficult. But anyway, you have 81% Reclaim on normal units, which I think translates into 40%, something like that, Reclaim. And then any overkill from the shot that landed 
the reason I'm thinking hard about that. Yes, I know that 40 is half of 80, but I can't remember if it's... Which, which percent comes first on the 90-50 split. But anyway, wrecks are worth a lot less. That's all you really need to know. I love Navy. It is my favorite thing about Spring Commander. Sometimes I'm a little bit sad that the unit selection is not quite as good in Navy as it is on the rest of the map. Let's just keep pace with that Galactic Colossus way over there in the background. Um, but you know, even with the limited unit selection that there is, Navy is a ton of fun. The guns are big, the boats are ginormous, and the Tempest Atlantis experimentals, even the Megalith, are gargantuan in size. It is just a glorious thing to behold and oh so fun to be in control of. Even watching it's awesome. That red trim Cybern looking beautiful in the water. Exactly as things should be. The only thing we're missing is green Aeon. The Aeon is blue for some reason. Heretic! How could you forsake the colors of the faction? Tempest Fire be OP. Although battleships can dodge it. A UEF battleship for one third the cost of a Tempest can one versus one and win against the Aeon T4. Any other battleship of any other faction, two battleships can kill a Tempest um, and they cost a third as much. So Tempests are really not mass efficient. But once you get three of them, it becomes a little bit more difficult to deal with because they're also dealing out some 900 plus torpedo damage between the three of them. And then in addition to that, if you aren't versus a UAF Navy, the range advantage comes into play in a big, big way. So if your opponent doesn't have any, um, any battles, any Tempests of their own, you're essentially pitting the longest range battleship, tied for that position anyway, versus the shortest range battleship. So even if you miss a couple shots here and there, the overall range advantage is still going to give you a huge helping hand. Torpedo bombers coming in, going to attempt to tear a new one in the Navy, but unfortunately their numbers are rapidly disintegrating. Um, lots of anti-air in the Cyber Navy, as we've discussed many, many times before. And even some flak moving out. That is going to be Aeon flak from a factory that has been donated. What is this from? Probably donated directly from another player. Uh, that would be Foley, because he is the only one who's Aeon at the moment. All right. There are four Tempests, almost five Tempests in the water now for Blackheart. We probably need to take another gander at the reclaim numbers. Looks like VMC, let's start at the top. Please don't freeze. There we go. 7,000 reclaim, 423 mass income, which is just so much mass. I love it when they start getting ready to tip 500 mass per tick because then you can pretty much do whatever the hell you want. We've got 14,000 reclaim for Steerborn, who is on 620 mass per tick income. Something like that. Yes. Some of that is from reclaim though. Then we've got 37 reclaimed, which is actually lower than I would have expected for Blackheart. Pascal at 6,900, 24,000 for Foley, Strogo on 30,000, and Dogler on 72,000. So Reclaim winner right up here. But you know what? I know the rule for, uh, hey, the Reclaim winner wins the game does not apply here because he pretty much lost his entire base. And that's the only reason that he has gotten that high of a Reclaim number. Actually, he's lost his entire base twice three times now. This is the life of a sentence front player. You build and then you rebuild and then you rebuild again. Should be a musical about that or something. I imagine that the reclaim numbers are about to go up quite substantially because we have engineers in the water now getting ready to clean up after this huge battle that took place. Broadswords moving in. That is a handy dandy tool from Steerborn. The 
the uh, highest DPS T3 gunship, if I'm not totally mistaken. Uh, that is going to do a tremendous amount of damage to those omens, and there are no anti-air units in the vicinity to deny them, except for this cruiser that is now moving into range, now that I pointed out that there is no anti-air, because caster, that's why. GC moving over towards Pascal's base. He is streaming out a steady... Well, streaming out a steady stream. Yeah, let's be repetitive. Why not? Of mercies towards that GC. 32,000 health. Some T2 gunships coming in to assist. And I'm not sure who's going to win that one, actually, because that was a weird separation on that turn. It looks like it may be Steerborn, but there are Sands here covering and then ASF streaming in from the factory. So the longer this goes on, the worse Steerborn is going to be off. And that turn clenched it. He decided to go after the gunships, and that sealed the deal. All of his ASF are going to go down, and that is the end of that. That is also the end of the GC. I do believe his air is going to stomp it into oblivion. No, why am I minus one? Because I turned down my overclock, that's why. I forgot about that. I thought it might help the crashing. No! I'm doomed to a slow CPU. Actually not. It is still fairly fast. This is just a huge game. Look at how many units are on this map. It's okay that we're running minus one. We've got time. We can sit around and chill and discuss things. So many Tempests! Oh, good lord. Was that a disconnect? Control K? What? No! Why you do this? Steerborn lost air, and it looks like Foley Control K. Oh my goodness. There is classic sentence rage for you. You know what? I'm gonna give it to him. I, I am not going to fault them for this one because I think we can safely say that the game was won by the north side anyway. Um, Lano is calling, stop stacking. <laughs> Random stack. All right, so a little bit of a dissection of what's going on here. We essentially had a stalemate on the south side to a certain degree. Uh, there were a lot of battleships on this side, so I think that Pascal was going to overpower Strogo at some point. Uh, also, the superior eco does not hurt, but it was somewhat of a stalemate. Then we have air win on this side. Um, Steerborn no longer has any air to project and cover, and we have T2 gunships moving down, probably more combat units coming from Snek. So, yeah, that was going to be a loss on this side because of the combined forces of the air and the rock player with superior eco. On this side, Blackheart just straight up took a dump on Foley. Foley had double eco. He was able to wreck Dogler's base multiple times, but in the end, Blackheart just outperformed him. I'm not entirely sure what specific thing led to that outcome. It's a combination of things. A little bit better micro, a little bit better usage of the units, capturing the island early, the harassment at the very beginning when he was able to stall out this side a fair bit, just little bits and pieces executing things just ever so much better than the other team. He was able to pull the win out of that, and then once he was able to reduce the Navy on this side to ashes. He was inevitably going to push down this side, and then we have the massive artillery stream coming from Dogler, which would have hit land here and gone all the way through to the back. So we have a an empty front. The Eco's intact, but an empty front, a losing right Navy, a losing left Navy, and the only hope that was left was air, which Steerborn lost at that moment. So like I said, I'm not necessarily going to fault these guys for the Control-K. Kind of makes for a disappointing end. But to be completely honest, these top-tier sentence games, you rarely see them go a lot longer than that tipping point. Because everybody just Control-Ks to save themselves the time. Alrighty, guys. Hopefully that was enjoyable for you. 
I know, <laughs> like I said, the ending's a little bit disappointing, but hey, that was some excellent play all the way up through there. Hopefully you guys can learn something from those initial build orders and the execution of those strategies. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Send me your replays, and I will see you when I cast them. Adios.